Good day and welcome to Microeconomics with Paul Tilley. I'm here today to discuss the assignment two. So that's dealing with chapter four material, elasticity, and chapter five material, consumer demand. So what we're going to do today is to take a look at the assignment problems for this. And the first one we're going to look at is chapter four, page 136, number 36. Okay, this problem says, assume that there's only one movie theater and only one video rental outlet in the small mining town of somewhere in northern Manitoba. The weekly demand by all townspeople for movies and video rentals is given in table 413. We'll go to that in a second. First of all, we want to fill in the total revenue columns. Now, that should be pretty straightforward. I'll just go to here. So here we have this table. We take the price of movies and we multiply it by the quantity of movies demanded in order to get our total. So that's 1,350. One, three, five, oh. Next, we look at the next one. That's $4 a movie at 400 would be $1,600. Next, five at $350, $1,750. Next, six at $300, $1,800. Seven at $250 is $1,750. Eight at $200 is $1,600. And nine at $150 is $1,350. Now, just want you to notice a little bit of a trend there. We see at the low price of $3, you'll notice that our quantity is rather high, but our profit is by no means maximized. You'll see that as we increase our price, the profitability, uh, sorry, the total revenue will, will hop up from $1,350 to $1,600 to $1,750, and it will peak out right here at $1,800, which is $6 for movie and that quantity demand of 300. Once it goes above $6 at 70 and $9, you'll notice that total revenue declines. Okay, so that's the first thing we're asked to do. The next thing we need to do the exact same thing for video. So the price of video, $2, $950. So we'll take two times 950 is $1,900. $250 times 900 is $2,250. 3 times 825 would be uh, 2475. 350 times 750 is 2625. Uh, 4 times 650 is 2600. 450 times 550 is 5 times 425 is 21.25. Same thing you'll notice here that total revenue starts off at 1900 at the three at the two dollar mark. As price of videos go up 250, our revenue is going up to 2250. At three dollars goes up 2475. At 350 at 26.25, and that's where it peaks out. After that point in time, it starts to decline. At four dollars, 450, and five dollars, we see the revenue decline. So what we are asked here, in the first instance, is what prices would maximize the seller's total revenue? So what we need to do there is identify the high price points, the high revenue points. So at $6 for movies, we maximize our revenue at $1,800. And at $350 for videos, we'll sell $750, and that will give us a total of $2,625. So that's part A and B. Those are the things you need to do there. It's just simply multiplying the price of movies times quantity of movies sold, or the price of the videos times the quantity of videos sold. That will give us our total revenue. And we identify the, the total revenue that when it's maximized. Okay, so that's A and B. The next thing we're asked here is 
What's the elasticity of demand for movies if the theater changes the price from six to five dollars? Again, when we look at the elasticity, what we're doing is comparing a shift in price, in this case from six to five dollars, and the corresponding change in, uh, in demand that occurs at that price. We're trying to determine you know, how, how sensitive is demand to a price change. So the first thing we need to do is take a look at this for six to five dollars. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So let's move down to C here. Part C, uh, what we're asking is to find out the elasticity of demand. And when we think about elastic demand, what we need to do is to use a little formula that looks at the percent change in quantity demanded over the percent change in price. And that will give us our elasticity of demand. So in the first instance, what we need to do is we're looking at a price that moves from six to five. So the lower portion is, is dealing with price. The upper portion is dealing with quantity. Now, if you look at the table, you'll see at, a, at six, at the price of six, there are 300 movies uh, gone to, or 300 movie seats sold. At a price of five, there's 350. So what we're doing is moving from a quantity of 350 to 300. So we simply subtract the two of those, and then we take the average of two of those, which is uh, 325. So that's uh, 350 minus 300 is 50 over 325 and 50 over 325 is uh, 0.1. And so that's that, and we do all that over, we do the change in the price, and the price went from 6 to 5, so we subtract. And we're worried about absolute values here, so we're not concerned with plus and minus. Uh, six uh, over 5 and 550 is the average. We take the average and that's 1 over 5 over 5 and that will yield a value of 18.2 So effectively what we're saying here is we've had a 15% change in quantity right here point one five. 15% change in quantity over an 18% change in price. So we're seeing that price moved relatively more than quantity in this case. And that is an indicator of inelasticity. In fact, if we, if we take the 15.4 and we divide it by 18.2, we'll get uh, 0.85 and that's an indicator of inelasticity inelastic demand. So that's, that's how you do that first one. That's how you do it for, for the issue there. So, and then we're asked, well, what's the change in revenue? Well, if we look at the uh, change in revenue, we went from, from that level, if we go back to our table, just talk back to the table, we went from six to five. So that was $1,800 at 6 to 1750 so 1800 was the original revenue minus the 1750 and that's a change in revenue of $50 reduction in revenue so that's what that does uh, the next part of the question says well What's, what's the deal from six to seven dollars? How, 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 what is the elasticity there? So again, we can take a look at that. And we do exactly, we do exactly the same thing, but this case is from six to seven dollars. So we use the same basic formula here. And I'm just going to erase this now so we can kind of, here, okay, so I'll just erase this out. What you maybe can 
consider here is what is the change in quantity for the relative change in price. That's always an important thing. And if the price doesn't change very much and you get a huge change in quantity relative to price, that's an indicator of elasticity. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to do the second one. So the second part or that says from six to seven dollars. So from six to seven dollars, what we gotta look at is what is the change in quantity from six to seven dollars. So if we read that off the table, from six to seven dollars, the quantity went from three hundred to two hundred and fifty. So we'll take three hundred minus two hundred and fifty divided by the average between the two, and the average between the two is two seventy-five. And that's our quantity information. And our price information, well, our price again, we have to look at that, we went from six to seven. So I'm gonna put the seven minus six over, the average between seven and six is 650. So if we do the math on that, what we'll end up with is we'll end up with an 18.2% change in quantity over, a 15.4% change in price. And again, so we see a much bigger shift relatively in quantity over price, and this is an indicator of elastic demand. So whenever quantity changes more than price relative to one another, it's elastic demand. And you say, well, what does this really mean? And they're asking there, okay, what conclusions can we draw from that? Well, we'll see that at a price above $6, the demand is inelastic, uh, uh, elastic, and at, from seven to six, it is elastic demand. So the best price to, to keep his price is, uh, is right there to maximize his revenue. That's six. Now, the, uh, the next thing that's asked here is E. Suppose a video store were to change its price to, uh, that maximizes total revenue. Suppose the video store was charging the price that maximized total revenue, but the city government imposed an excise tax on videos that resulted in the price of videos rising to 450. So we have video prices going up. So, <clears throat> Instead of, instead of uh, video prices being $350, they are $450. Okay? So as a result, the demand for movies increases 20 at each price. So we want to look at, well, what was the demand for movies originally? At each price, price point, what we do is we increase it by 20. So it was $450, so now it is $470. And it was 400, now it's 420. And it was um, 350, now it's 370. Uh, it goes up to 320, to 70, to 20, and 170. So we see uh, rises there by 20 at each level. And we just do the total revenue by multiplying, so 3 times 470 is uh, 1410, 1680, uh, 1530. Okay? So we just, all we've done is we've adjusted the quantity of movies there in order to do that calculation. So would the theater now want to charge the same price for movies? Well, you keep in mind what was the theater charging originally? Well, the movie theater was originally charging six dollars. And we ask ourselves, is six dollars still the point where maximum revenue is? And we look at it, 1920 is still the maximum revenue at $6. So yes, we would continue to charge $6. That's the simple answer to that question. Okay, 
so that's those sections there should be pretty straightforward. Where students run into some problems deal with the cross elasticity issue. And the next question deals with cross elasticity. Number F, or part F, deals with cross elasticity. And it says, given the circumstances in E, so again we refer back to E to this, what's the cross, cross elasticity of movies for videos? What does this say about the relationship between the two products? So, we have to think about, okay, what exactly is meant by cross-elasticity? So we need to consider this issue of cross-elasticity here. And in order to do that, we got to compare the demand for a certain product versus the price for the other product. So it's a percent change in quantity of A. change in price of product B. So there's the simple formula for it. So what we need to be able to do is to look at what is the percent change in uh, quantity here. Well, we'll think now, we'll refer to the original table and it says, okay, looking at that, the price went from 350 450. So the price went from 350 to 450. Okay, that's, that's the starting point in terms of the price thing. And then we have to ask ourselves, well, what, what happened to the quantity at those relative things? So we've got uh, to take a look now at the relative, uh, that's the price, so we need to look at the relative quantity of movies. So for that same one, movies went from 300 to 320. Again, because of the 20 rods, so we need to look at the corresponding movies. So 300 to 320. So what we need to be able to do is, okay, let's take a look at the percentage uh, change in quantity. So we went from 320 to 300, so we take that and we take the average, 310. So this is our quantity figure. And then we look at the price of the other one. It went from, uh, we'll put the bigger number first, 450 minus 350 over uh, 4 would be the average then. So we take that and we do the crunching on that, and that is. Um, 0 0.0, 0 0.0645 over 0.25. So again, this is quantity. We've had a 6% change in quantity and uh, uh, 2.5 or 25% uh, 25 change in 25% uh, change there in the price. So that's so what we have here is, uh, what we're most importantly is what we're looking for in this cross elasticity, is it plus or minus? It's plus. So a positive cross elasticity. So we got a positive cross elasticity. And that's an indicator that the products are substitutes. Obviously, if the price of one goes up, people will go and buy the other one. That's basically what's being said there. So there's a good indicator that they're substitutes. Does, that's F, the cross elastic, cross, uh, la, the cross elasticity. Part G says, okay, let's take a look at income elasticity. Now, if we recall, income elasticity is the percentage change in quantity over the percentage change income. Okay, so we need to take a look at this one now. Okay, referring to the original data, and it's important to differentiate between the original data and the revised data, so 413, we'll take a look at it. Assuming the average weekly earnings of the townspeople raised from 500 to 550. So change in income went from 500 to 550. Okay, that's the, that's the first thing we want to be able to do. 
uh, with the result and the, with the result that demand for movies increased by 20 percent. Okay, so we know that the uh, at the at the uh, the market price for the movies was six, which is what maximized revenue. Six, that was the price. We sold 300 at that price. So effectively, 20% on top of 300 is 360. So we got the percentage change is 360 to 300. So we're seeing uh, the quantity of movies go from 300 to 360. So what we need to do here is take the percentage change in quantity and calculate that. So 360 minus 300 over the average, which in this case is 330. And that's our quantity figure. Our price figure, we went from 550 to 500, but we just put the bigger one first for our purposes of math. And 525 is the average. We do the calculation on that, and when you do the calculation on that, that's 18.2% change in the quantity over a 9.5% change in income. Sorry, I should put income here. Uh, so we had a relatively small change in income versus the quantity. So we, we must conclude from that that it's a positive elasticity, positive elasticity of the income, which means that we buy more of it. And when we buy more of it, we say that this is an elastic and it's what's called a normal good. And normal goods are goods we buy more of as we make more money. So movies are considered normal goods based on that analysis. So that's uh, that first question. Uh, I think that uh, having done this, you'll be good and prepared for the exam. Uh, I'd ask you to run over this again if you've had some trouble with it. And uh, next we'll uh, move on to our next question. Okay, well chapter 5 starts off talking about consumer demand and we're, we're using a concept called usuals here where we're measuring our pleasure that we get out of things and effectively what we need to do is to figure out what combinations of things that we buy will give us the most pleasure. So what we're effectively doing here in order to, to kind of understand the concept is to compare two products and we're saying okay we're going to buy so much of one and so much of another. What quantities of each one should we buy in order to maximize the pleasure that we get out of or to maximize our utility? So here's the problem. Suppose that on your vacation, uh, you're down in the Caribbean and you're trying to determine how to spend your time and money on two activities, windsurfing and snorkeling. They both cost $10 an hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in with so much money, in this case I think we're going in with $60, we're going in with $60 and we're going to allocate that $60 to both of that activity, both of those activities for $10 each. So the price is exactly the same in terms of relative to one another. What we need to be able to do is get the maximum pleasure out of it. So we're going to assess the pleasure that we get out of snorkeling or the pleasure we get out of windsurfing. And we're going to make our decision based on that. Okay. So complete the columns for total utilities. So let's take a look at the columns. Here's the simple column. And what we're doing in these is we're saying to ourselves how much pleasure we get out of a given thing. So let's say, for example, we're going windsurfing. Our first hour of windsurfing, we're going to get a utility of 85 out of it. In other words, the pleasure we're going to get out of one hour of windsurfing is 85. One of the key things that's talked about in this chapter is as we get more and more of a given thing, the amount of extra value it gives us in terms of pleasure declines. So we're seeing here that our second hour of windsurfing, for example, only has a margin utility of 80. In other words, it's only 99, 95% is pleasurable. Uh, our third hour goes to 65, 60, 55, and so on. So the utility declines as we do more and more of it. Same holds true here with snorkeling. You'll see that it starts off at 100 and it works its way down to 10 because as we get more of it, we're not going to appreciate extra successive amounts of it. So the real question is, how do, we, how do we balance those off? How do we get the maximum pleasure? Well, the first thing we need to do is calculate our total utility. Our total utility is just a summation of all of our margins. So in the first instance, for example, in, uh, in windsurfing, our margin utility is 85, so our total utility is indeed 85. In the second instance, our margin utility is 80, so we take the 80 and add it to the 85 that we got from our first, 
So that's 165. We do that for each successive one. So it's 85, 165, 230, uh, 290, 345. Uh, add 40 more to that, and that's 385. Add 30 more to that, and that's 415. Add 5 more to that, and that's 420. So the total utility of all that windsurfing, if we chose to do all windsurfing, would be 420 units. We have to do the same thing with snorkeling here. We'll take the totals here. First hour of snorkeling is 100, so our total utility would be 100. Second hour, if we were to do two, is 100 plus 90, 190, and so on. So that's 265, uh, 335, 385, 410, 430, and 440. So uh, our total utility should be pretty easy to find. It's just summing up the marginal utilities as we move along. So that doesn't tell us a lot. We have a $60 budget, and we want to maximize our utility. So here's the process that we need to do. We need to find the, the things that pleasure us most, okay? So let's take it. Let's start off with our first, first hour of things. We have $60 in our pocket. We're going out with $10. We're going to spend it on one or the other. We're going to go windsurfing or we're going to snorkel. The challenge is, is that we need to determine which one do we like the most. Well, let's look at our measurement of utility. The marginal utility for the first hour of, of windsurfing is 85, whereas the marginal utility for the first hour of snorkeling is 100. So naturally, we're going to go to the one that gives us the most pleasure. Snorkeling, in this case, that first hour of snorkeling, is 100. So we're going to go and do our first hour of snorkeling. So one will be snorkeling. Okay? So we've got $50 left. We take another $10 out of our pocket, and we have to choose now. What are we going to do? Are we going to do our first hour of, of windsurfing, which has a marginal utility of 85, or do we uh, do a second hour of snorkeling? Second hour of snorkeling has a marginal utility of 90. Again, we say which one's bigger? The marginal utility of the second hour of snorkeling is still bigger, so we're going to, in the second hour, we're going to snorkel. We have $40 left. We're going to go back again now. We're going to spend all our money, by the way. So we do a first hour of windsurfing at a marginal utility of 85, or a third hour of snorkeling at a marginal utility of 75. Well, in this instance, then, 85 is higher than 75, so we're going to go windsurfing. So we're going to do a first hour of, of windsurfing. I'll just call it wind for short. So that's, uh, that's our windsurfing. Now, so we go back again, we've got $30 left, we're going to go and say, what are we going to do? Well, our second hour of windsurfing has a marginal utility of 80, and our third hour of snorkeling has a marginal utility of 75. We're going to pick the higher one, so we're going to go windsurfing. So the fourth hour, we're going to go windsurfing. We have $20 left. We go back to the, the yard again, and we say, well, a third hour of, of windsurfing gives us a marginal utility of 65, whereas a third hour of snorkeling has a marginal utility of 75. We're going to go wind. Uh, we're going to go snorkeling. So let's snorkel. So our fifth hour, we're in snorkel. We come back with our last ten dollars. We have to make a choice. Do we do a third hour of windsurfing at a marginal utility of 65, or do we do a fourth hour of snorkeling at a marginal utility of 70? Again, we'll pick the one with the higher, and snorkeling has the higher at 70. So our sixth hour, then, we're going to snorkel. Okay, that's how we make the choice. So what you see we've done, we've done one, two, three, four hours of snorkeling, and two hours of windsurfing. That's, that's the fundamental of that question. Now, having done that then, having done that, we have to ask ourselves, what is the total utility that we get out of that? Well, all we do is add up all the marginal utilities. So 85 plus 80 plus 100 plus 90 plus 75 plus 70. Thus, the marginal utility we got out of each hour. And when that tallies up, I think it comes up to 500 units. So that's 500 units. That's the total pleasure we got out of going snorkeling. 
Then it goes on to say and says, oh, well, we found 20 extra dollars in our pocket. How do we allocate that extra 20 dollars? Well, in this case, what we need to be able to do is just continue on. We found that extra 20 dollars. Let's go and take a look at what we can do with that 20 dollars. So, in this case, um, we have the third hour of windsurfing has a margin utility of 65. The, the fifth hour of snorkeling has a margin utility of 50. So, we're going to do that third hour of windsurfing. So, seven, win. Our fourth hour of uh, windsurfing has a margin utility of 60. And our fifth hour of snorkeling has a margin utility of 50. What are we going to do? We're going to pick the higher one. Again, in this case, we've got all our money spent, so we've got two extra hours of windsurfing. Effectively, you now we have in total four hours of snorkeling and four hours of windsurfing. We wanted to tally up what we got for our total utility. Our total utility was 500 plus the 65 plus 60, which is 600 and. 25 units out of that total 80 dollars. So that's that question there. Now, here comes the tricky part that a lot of people have some trouble with. In the next part of the problem, the next part of the problem, they say, okay, you go back the next day and unfortunately you discover that the hourly charge for snorkeling has increased to 15 dollars. How would you allocate? So what we've got here is a little bit of a different scenario where we've got a little bit of a different scenario where what we have is the snorkeling now cost $15. And windsurfing still remains at $10. So we're going to ask ourselves, how do we compare apples with apples? What do we do in order to ensure that we have uh, we're comparing the utilities per dollar as opposed to per event. So what we need to do is we need to be able to calculate the marginal utility per dollar spent. So we simply take our marginal utility in any given one and divide it by the number of dollars that it costs us. So in the, in the case of windsurfing at $10, we're going to get the marginal utility per dollar. So it's 85, so that's 8 0.5 per dollar. Uh, the marginal utility in the second case is 8, so that's 8 per dollar. 65, that's 6.5 per dollar. 60 is 6 per dollar. 5.5 per dollar. 4 per dollar. 3 per dollar. And 0 0.5 per dollar. So that's, that's the marginal utility per dollar there. And in the case of snorkeling, we got to take snorkeling and divide it by 15. So what we're doing here is taking that and dividing it by 15. So if you take 100 and divide it by 15, you'll get 6.67. Uh, 6, 5, 4.67, 3.33, 3.33. One point five three and zero point six seven. Having done this now, having done this, we can compare which one has the most utility per dollar. We do exactly the same thing we do in the first instance when we looked at this problem. We have to compare though them in terms of a relative weight. Before we do that, let's look at our total utility. Our total utility is just a matter of summing. Uh, the utility, so 85 starts off for uh, windsurfing, margin utility for the first hour is 85, so the total utility is 85. And the second hour is 85 plus 80, which is 165. 165 plus the other 65 is, uh, I'm going to make a mistake if I don't break this down, uh, 230, uh, 290, 345. 385, 415, and 420. So all we're doing is summing up the marginal utilities. We have to do the same thing here in the snorkeling. And again, we're looking at uh, 100, 190, 
Thanks.